Coming up, a man who appeared to be turning his life around shot to death last night. And the immigration minister updates the department checks in Abaco, so don't go anywhere. The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition, starts now. Now in HD. Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Good evening, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis, and welcome to The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. Thanks so much for tuning in. Topping the news, as Haitian boats filled with illegal migrants continue to make their way into the Bahamas, officials remind residents that it is unlawful to assist those without proper documentation to be here in the Bahamas. In February, the Immigration Department mounted an island-wide check of illegal migrants in Abaco after it was reported that a Haitian boat landed just off Marsh Harbor. Some were apprehended, others melted into the population. Abaco has one of the largest illegal migrant populations in this country. Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Fred Mitchell, told ZNS News that only 55 illegal migrants were apprehended during that immigration exercise. Additionally, he says immigration checks will continue in Abaco for some time to come. When it took place uh, a couple of weeks ago, many people called up and said, oh, people are hiding because they knew you were coming. Well, they can't hide forever. Uh, and so that's why you have to go back. And, and what it means, uh, for example, is there's going to be, uh, over the coming weeks, intensive checks of each employer in Abaco to be sure that their employees are properly documented to be in the Bahamas. And I think that's where the litmus test is actually going to come. And not only Haitians are making their way into the Bahamas, yesterday a group of Cuban nationals were apprehended by members of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force in the area of Key South Bank. The HMBS Derwood Knowles was on patrol in the southwestern Bahamas when they discovered the group near Anguilla Key. The five Cubans were aboard a makeshift life raft at the time and were taken to Bimini for further processing by immigration officials. This just in from police, a man was found shot to death on dumping ground at 5 o'clock this afternoon, pushing the homicide count to near 40 for the year. This just after millions of Christians around the world commemorated the crucifixion of Jesus Christ on Good Friday, where another young man was killed on the streets of New Providence. Last night's murder impacting the church family of the victim, a resident of Ridgeland Park. This just as he appeared to be making a promising turnaround. ZNS News was at the crime scene and later at his church. He's my son, my only son, but I forgive them. Let peace make peace with them and let it just be bygones, bygones. While at Trinity City of Praise on Good Friday night, the mother of the country's latest murder victim, Margaret Gardner, wept uncontrollably, saying she is at peace with the person or persons responsible for the brutal murder of her son, 21-year-old Harry Gardner Jr. Gardner was gunned down while playing a game of dominoes with a group of men on First Street, Coconut Grove, just a stone's throw away from the Grove Police Station. His mother says she finds comfort in knowing that her son gave his life to Christ after his release from prison recently. His last few hours with me was wonderful. He spent it here at church, the Trinity with Pastor and all our loving fellow members. It was good. He gave his life to Christ. And, you know, he has to accept Christ in his heart and he has to talk about it and everything. So, I have no hurt, no sorrows. I mean, I have a little pain, yes, but God knows what he's doing. Youth leader at Trinity City of Praise, Brittany Miller, says despite Gardner's troubled past, he came back to church. She says he had a big heart and appeared eager to make a positive change in his life. She reflected on his final moments. From prayer to worship to scavenger hunts around the, the whole entire premises, um, to cracking jokes and different games. So it was, it was a time of bonding and this was just last week Friday. So to us, this is like, a shock because we just spent an entire night with him laughing and talking and now he's gone. Officer in charge of the flying squad of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Clayton Fernander, gave ZNS News an update on their initial investigation. At this present time, the only information that we awakened with that he, along with several other young men, was just under the street light playing a game of dominoes 
than a known gunman approach. He was on foot and fired several shots and disappeared. The cease is known to the police. Uh, he has just been released on bail for a serious matter. Another suspect shot by police during a high-speed chase is the second incident this week. Police say shortly before 3 o'clock this morning, officers from the mobile division were on patrol in the Pearedale area when they observed a suspected stolen vehicle with four mill occupants driving with lights off. The officers ordered the occupants to stop, but they refused and sped off. And a high-speed chase ensued, ending at Hospital Lane after the vehicle crashed into a fence. One of the suspects was shot to the shoulder. He was taken to hospital where he remains in stable condition under heavy police guard. However, three other suspects were able to elude police on foot. Earlier this week, two suspects in stolen cars led the police on a chase from Soldier Road ending in Pinewood Gardens. They opened fire on police and were shot. They too remain under heavy guard in hospital. Also, four suspects arrested by Drug Enforcement Unit officers for firearm possession. Around 7 p.m. last night, officers acting on intelligence went to Go Slow Bend, West Bay Street, where they conducted a search of a silver Nissan Skyline, Skyline vehicle and found a handgun along with seven rounds of ammunition. Two adult males and two adult females were taken into custody for questioning in connection with that discovery. The mailboat system has a long-standing history here in the Bahamas, and with this Easter being one of the busiest travel and freight periods for operators, Cleopatra Murphy went to the Potter's Key Dock and spoke with several people on the role they play in connecting the islands. Potter's Key Dock was a hive of activity on Wednesday as vehicles bearing food supplies were hauled around and mailboat employees were busy loading goods onto containers for delivery to the family islands. Mailboats are a long-standing Bahamian tradition and are a vital linkage between New Providence and the family islands. In many cases, they are the lifeblood that keeps those economies afloat. Resident Thomas Bastian is well acquainted with their value, utilizing the services at least twice a month. I have some very good friends in all of the family islands because I used to be an engineer on a mailboat one time ago, so I have a very historical knowledge about the feeling of people sitting on the dock watching for the mail to reach in because their package is on board. For family islanders, mailboats have been the traditional means of travel long before air travel became popular. Anthony Green moved to Nassau for employment but says he was returning home to visit his wife. For him, it was the safer option. I used to get a blitz. I hear of all kind of accidents and all kind of things as well. I used to get to die, although I was a soldier. But soldiers get scared too. Maggie Johnson, who has been employed on mailboats for the past 20 years, sees the service as essential. It's really important to, for people to get their grocery over there. It's over there. It's really expensive. It is a sentiment Monique Turner shares after relocating to Acklands for her job. I have to use the mailboat because Acklands is very expensive. So I have to use the mailboat a lot to get a lot of stuff, buy wholesale stuff, and then bring it to the island. She says survival can be difficult on the islands and schedules are sometimes unpredictable. I only wish that it would be um, more, like probably more often, the boats would come to the island more often, especially old islands like Auckland. At the mailboat company, Shaquille Demerit says they mostly transport freight, but for passengers, it is another option. Very more convenient because the, the flight. I know, I know a lot of people scared of heights and scared of traveling. Also, a lot of people scared of water. Also, because the mailboat system plays such an important role, contributing to the comfort of many on the islands and is a vital connector of those scattered islands, Bastian says it should be fostered. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. Stay close. We've got more news right after this quick break.